Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of Federal Trust. We've had 10 dramatic days in British politics recently. And whenever there's drama in British politics, Brexit is never very far from the surface. And that's certainly what's been happening over the past 10 days. All the competitors for the leadership of the Conservative Party have been trying to prove their commitment to the true Brexit faith. The ERG has even set up a Spanish Inquisition uh, to ensure that uh, only representatives of the purest Brexit faith uh, are considered for the leadership of the Conservative Party. Apparently the ERG are uncertain whether to recommend Suella Braverman, Liz Trust or Penny Mordaunt. Liz Trust would be a, an odd choice given that she originally was a Remainer in 2016 and no doubt she's worked her passage back from the point of view of the ERG by her aggressive and potentially illegal uh, approach to the Northern Ireland Protocol. So Ella Braverman uh, has tried to burnish her credentials uh, by suggesting that the United Kingdom should lead the, UN, U, the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, Penny Mordaunt, as we'll see, um, has got a, a record of, of service um, to the Leave campaign, not a particularly glorious one. Those um, people like Jeremy Hunt and Tom Tuventat, uh, who might fall under the suspicion of the ERG for their pro-European, their Remain tendencies, um, have done their best to reassure warriors within the Conservative Party. Hunt in particular was uh, uh, outspoken in saying that he was happy to uh, disapply major elements of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, Tom Tugendhat um, went further with a bizarre suggestion that there should be a, a league of Viking parliaments, including the Irish Parliament. It wasn't clear what it was supposed to do, um, but it was a, a, an alternative to the European Union. Tugendhat had obviously been preparing his um, leadership bid um, by the very hostile and dismissive remarks that he made a couple of weeks ago about the suggestion of Tobias Elwood, Elwood that the U United Kingdom might like to rejoin the European single market. But perhaps in all the shenanigans over the past um, 10 days, um, the most remarkable development has been the position of, of Rishi Sunak. Um, Sunak uh, has been, um, to, to his, his credit or discredit, as you like to put it, uh, a firm lever from the European Union for a long time. It now turns out um, that the Bruges Group and others have done analysis suggesting that his support within the, Europe, within the parliamentary party contains a, an unacceptably large number of Remainers. And if, as seems likely, it will be Sunak and one other who, is, who are put to the membership of the Conservative Party, then it will be an argument of Sunak's opponents um, that he is the Remainer candidate. This is a, a world turned upside down, uh, only matched by his claim to be a, a, a Thatcherite, favouring sound finance, which these days in the Conservative Party is regarded with suspicion. Tax cuts are, are seen as, as much more important. If Penny Morden does become the next leader of the Conservative Party, it will be at least partly on the basis of what she said and did in 2016, when she completely misstated um, the situation about the possible uh, accession of Turkey to the, U to the European Union, denying that the United Kingdom had a veto over that accession, which is simply not true. Perhaps it will be appropriate um, that, the, um, that the Leave campaign, which was based on lies and fantasy, um, should at one point, should six years later, uh, give birth um, to a, a conservative premiership from one of its leading supporters, leading advocates. I draw two conclusions from this uh, epi set of episodes that have occurred within the Conservative Party over the past 10 days. Um, the first is that, that radical Euroscepticism is so deeply embedded within the Conservative Party that the idea that it can ever emancipate itself from this Euroscepticism is, is simply um, uh, wishful thinking. Um, as long as the Conservative Party survives in anything like its present form, Euroscepticism, radical Euroscepticism will be at the heart of it. The thought that somebody like Tugendhat or even like Mordaunt um, would become uh, the leader of the Conservative Party and then under the pressure of reality and office 
um, adopt policies that were much more moderate and much more conducive to the long-term interests of the United Kingdom, uh, though those hopes are, are, are simply pie in the sky. I therefore don't agree with um, uh, Lord Heseltine and others who said that the end of Boris means the end of Brexit. Uh, I don't believe that. I think that the Conservative Party will continue its advocacy, its pressure for uh, radical, ever more radical forms of Brexit. Um, and if Brexit is to be reversed, it will have to be not by waiting for um, the Conservative Party to change its mind, but by, by advocacy, by political activity, by agitation in favour of reversing but Brexit. It's tempting, I can see, for people like Lord Heseltine in particular to believe that the party um, that they used to belong to, perhaps still do belong to, uh, will one day return to the path of moderation and sanity. Um, I think, uh, as I say, that's um, self-deception on their part. If we look from the Conservative Party to the other side of the political debate, um, we see that the Labour Party is not as uh, divided, or currently not as divided at the moment, on Europe or on other topics um, as the Conservatives. Um, we've had um, in the competition to become leader of the Conservative Party uh, extraordinary uh, attacks upon each other uh, by cabinet colleagues who a week ago were sitting around the same cabinet table. There doesn't seem to be any of that in the Labour Party at the moment. Uh, on the European issue, Keir Starmer has, has invented this mantra of making Brexit work, um, which even people like David Lammy um, uh, seem to be willing to go along with. But there's a cost to be paid for this um, political calming of the waters in the Labour Party, and it's a, a cost of intellectual coherence, because there is no intellectual coherence to the way in which Keir Starmer says he wants to make Brexit work and then rules out all the things that perhaps could make Brexit work. Freedom of movement, joining the single market, customs union. Without those things, it's not even going to be possible to provide the mitigations of um, Brexit that, that might be possible. I very much doubt whether in any serious sense Brexit can be made to work, but perhaps it can be mitigated but it's not going to be mitigated um, with the um, exclusions and the refusal of uh, Keir, Keir Starmer, um, for instance, to, with, to rejoin the customs union or the, the single market. Uh, his uh, approach has been described as, as cakeism, uh, but diet cakeism, not asking for very much, but not likely to get it anyway. If there is to be a, a change in the terms and practices of the of the trade and cooperation agreement, then it will have to be done on the basis of negotiations with the European Union. And the European Union will need to be convinced that there's an interest for the Union in negotiating with the future Labour government. And it doesn't appear to me that what this particular future Labour government or what this particular future Labour Prime Minister has in mind it's going to be particularly interesting for the European Union. Uh, even in the Labour Party, I'm afraid there's an element of talking to oneself and not asking what is the interest of the European Union, which is not a, a malicious or bullying organisation, but it is an organisation that wants to defend its own interests. I've been surprised um, at the reception which has been given over the past 10 days to what I regard as Keir Starmer's intellectual incoherence on the matter of Europe. Uh, I can understand that uh, as a practicing politician, he may see advantages uh, in the calculation that he's making about perhaps retaining the support of the Red Wall. I'm not even sure that he's right, but I can understand the calculation. What I don't understand is the, uh, the, the assumption uh, of much of the commentariat of journalists, of acad academics, that, that Sama has no alternative um, but to adopt the extraordinarily cautious um, and almost conservative approach to the European Union, um, which he has been manifesting. There doesn't seem to be the sense at all um, that public opinion is shifting within the United Kingdom uh, and that, in, in fact, uh, a much more positive attitude towards the European Union might well be politically popular. 
we know that um, uh, a large majority of the people um, consulted in opinion polls think that um, Brexit is being badly handled. There's a smaller majority, depending on the opinion poll, which says that um, it will be a good idea to rejoin the European Union. And yet this small majority is in no way represented within the political class, within the political discourse uh, of our country. This seems to me quite extraordinary. We've heard a lot about how um, the European Union uh, was uh, an idea uh, imposed upon uh, the majority in the United Kingdom by a metropolitan elite. Well, it's the other way around now. There's a, a metropolitan elite, perhaps not so metropolitan, a political elite, um, which is preventing a proper discussion of whether and in what circumstances we should rejoin the European Union. Uh, the Federal Trust has spent uh, a lot of time over uh, in recent years uh, considering precisely that question. And in doing so, we, we think uh, that we are in line with the long-term interests of, of the United Kingdom. Because if you say there's absolutely no chance of rejoining the European Union, it's a subject that isn't even worth talking about, then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And we in the Federal Trust don't want to be part of that self-fulfilling prophecy. Our senior research researcher, uh, Andrew Blick, has recently produced a very interesting paper on the circumstances and possibilities of rejoining. We don't necessarily expect everybody to agree with every detail of the paper. But on the other hand, it is an important contribution to a debate which needs to be had. And it's a debate which the political parties, the main political parties, particularly the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, but also to some extent the, the Liberal Democrats are, are shunning because they're afraid of, of what, it, what, it, what it might lead to for their political popularity. Uh, federal trusts, commentators, academics ought to have a, a different approach, ought to have a, a freedom um, to look at the real circumstances of the United Kingdom and talk about the urgent necessity of finding a way before um, irreparable harm has been done of joining the European Union. Federal Trust will continue contributing to the, that debate um, and I hope very much that you will continue to find our contribution interesting, useful and stimulating.